Now let's talk about how to constrain and load your model properly. So um, this is very basic because a lot of people ask us, oh, what is a constraint? So at the beginning we were thinking, oh, that's so obvious. But as some people don't, you know, understand fully, I decided to present it in a very easy way. So constraints describe when the model is fixed and how, how is it fixed, let's say. And loads describe the force of the pressure which is applied externally to the model that causes the mechanical deformation and stresses. So you have a small picture on the right. So probably if you're an engineer you're thinking like me, oh this guy is not static, he will probably move with such a big load. And that's right, but that was only, you know, to give you a small uh, illustration that, you know, they have the load, the constraint is where the guy is blocked. So let's suppose he's not moving for this case. But, by the way, I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm doing linear static in this, in this slide, so that's, that's another thing. Okay, uh, you have different type of constraints, and to understand that, you have to know a very simple concept which is called the degree of freedom. So basically, uh, the degree of freedom describes how model is free to move uh, in a 3D uh, space. So you know that model can move in three direction because we have three spa spatial direction and it can rotate around the three axis, the three main axis. So we have six degrees of freedom when the model is not constrained at all. So the maximum for one, one part is six degree of freedom. So when the model is constrained in one position, what you do is that you are actually removing some degrees of freedom. So for example, you have, let's say, three main type of constraints. Uh, we have what is called the fixed constraint, which is removing the six degrees of freedom. You have the pinned constraint, which is removing three degrees of freedom in translation only, so it allows the rotation. And you have a no rotation constraint, which is basically the contrary of the pinned constraint. And of course, you can constrain as you want any direction of the model, so you can say, oh, this face will be constrained only in x direction, and it will not rotate in x direction. So uh, all these things uh, are the, the different ways to constrain the model. But how, how do you actually constrain properly your model? Because this is something a lot of people are wondering, how do you know the correct way to uh, constrain your model? And here I have to tell you something. Uh, there is no straightforward way for any model which means that you will have to find your own strategy for each model. And how do you do that? Here's a way I wrote you in four steps. The first thing is you have to visualize how your physical model can move in the reality in translation and rotation. So you see here on the left, this is the real product in action. So how is it intended to be used? Now, uh, let's say it's fixed and the, the woman is uh, sat on, on this position. So, you can say, oh, the model will be fixed here like that. You will apply some loads there and there. And this is, let's say, your assumption that the constraint will be like that. So, you have to ask you these questions. First, visualize your physical model. How is it fixed? How is it constrained? Then, which part is fixed? think about it, which surface of your model is can't move uh, and in which direction. Is it really fixed or is it pinned or is it one specific direction which cannot move but it can rotate in another? Uh, where is the model fixed exactly? Now, all these things and this is only you know, four questions but you can ask yourself much more questions. But by asking yourself those questions and making some assumptions about how your model will be, uh, will be constrained, you can find a way to do that. But again, I have to warn you that you have to be careful with the assumptions because they may be wrong. So we always have to keep in mind the possibility that we are wrong somewhere. So you have to check the assumptions that you're doing 
by simply analyzing the model and seeing if it makes sense. You know, you have to look at the result and think, oh, does the result make sense for me? Uh, and in some cases, it's obvious, uh, but in other cases, it's not. So you have to, you know, do some. You have to do some trial errors. So basically, this is what I call the improvement circle. So you have to ask yourself. You have to imagine how it should be constrained. You have to plan how should you should constrain it. Then you have to do it to do the test and. If it's not satisfactory, you have to improve and you have to do that over and over again until you get something that works. That's how real engineers are working.